Complex rationals are fractions that have fractions within the fractions. So if you haven't looked at multiplying and dividing rationals or adding and subtracting rationals yet, you want to stop this and go back in the playlist and watch those first and do some of those practice problems before you come to these complex ones. An example of a complex fraction or complex rational would be something like if I had 1 plus 1 third divided by 2 fifths minus 3 sevenths. That's just an example with numbers. I totally made it up. But um, let's see what it works out to be. The reason this is complex is because it's a fraction within other fractions. So what I like to do to simplify complex rationals involves um, simplifying the numerator, simplifying the denominator, and then do it carrying out the division problem. There are a lot of different ways to simplify complex rationals. Really, it's what works best for you. I'm going to show you this method. If you find another method online somewhere, by all means, use whatever you like best. So for me, if I want to simplify the numerator, I need the, to write 1 as something over 3. Well, the least common denominator is 3. So I need to multiply 1 by 3 over 3. In the denominator, I need to have the least common denominator. And in this case, 5 and 7, it's 35. So I need to multiply the first fraction by 7 over 7. And I need to multiply the second fraction by 5 over 5. That way I have a common denominator of 35. So let's see what this problem looks like. I end up with 3 over 3 plus 1 over 3 over 14 over 35 minus 15 over 35. Now let's simplify. I'm going to simplify the numerator. 3 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is 4 over 3. 14 over 35 minus 15 over 35 is negative 1 over 35. Now this is just a fraction divided by another fraction. We did this in an earlier video. And remember, when you're dividing by a fraction, you're really multiplying by its reciprocal. So this problem becomes 4 over 3 times the reciprocal of negative 1 over 35, which is negative 35 over 1. Now we can multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and we're done. So in this case, I have 4 times negative 35, which is negative 140, over 3 times 1, which is 3. Sometimes this simplifies. In this case, these numbers I picked don't simplify any further, and so we're done. This improper fraction, negative 140 over 3, is our final answer. So now we're going to look at some fractions with variables in them, where things get a little trickier. We're still going to do the same steps, though, finding the common denominators and simplifying. So here's a fraction with x's in them. The first, the numerator has 1 plus 1 over x, and the denominator has 1 minus 1 over x squared. To simplify this using the method I talked about, which is simplifying the top and then simplifying the bottom, we're going to treat each of them individually before we start putting anything together. So if I look at the numerator, that's the top, I need to have a denominator of x. So I would need to multiply not 1 by x over x. If I look at the denominator, I would need to have a common denominator of x squared. So I'm going to need to multiply by x over x squared for that other term, the 1. When we carry this out, we end up with x over x plus 1 over x over x squared over x squared minus 1 over x squared. All right, now we can simplify. We can add or subtract these fractions. x plus 1 over x. That's the top. The denominator becomes x squared minus 1 over x squared. Now I'm ready to start flipping. I am going to flip that fraction because dividing by a fraction is multiplying by its reciprocal. So I have x plus 1 over x times x squared over x squared minus 1. Now that we have this kind of complex thing going on, I actually want to factor this. I want to try to factor it a little bit further. 
In this case, I can factor x squared minus 1. So we're really going to end up doing x plus 1 over x times x times x over x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now remember, when you're multiplying, you just multiply the tops and you multiply the bottom, so I can go ahead and cancel out any common factors. This is why I factored it in the first place, because x plus 1 cancels. One of the x's also cancels. And what I'm left with for my simplified fraction is just x over x minus 1. Since x is the term on the top and x minus 1 is the whole factor, I can't cancel out those x's. I'm done. x over x minus 1 is the simplified version of this complex fraction. This one's a little bit different. a minus 2 is the numerator. so I really don't have to do anything to it in order to uh, simplify it because it's not a fraction at all. The denominator does need to be simplified. I have 4 over a and a. Well, I need to write that second term over a, so I'm going to need to multiply it by a over a. So I end up with a minus 2 over 4 over a minus a squared over a. So we can simplify a little bit. We can say a minus 2 over 4 minus a squared over a. Now let's go ahead and carry out this division problem. Remember, dividing means multiplying by the reciprocal. So I am going to end up with a minus 2, and I'm going to write it as a fraction, over 1, times a over 4 minus a squared. Before we actually do our multiplying, though, let's factor. This thing factors. I can say instead that this is negative a squared plus 4. Factor out the negative, and you end up with negative 1 times a squared minus 4, which is a difference of squares. So when I actually carry out this multiplication problem, I'm going to have a minus 2 over 1 times a over negative 1 times a minus 2 times a plus 2. So you can see why being able to factor makes these problems a lot easier. That's why I suggested in one of my earlier videos to go back and look at the factoring. It's very important. It's going to make a lot, thing, a lot of things a lot more simpler. Because I can see now, if I'm going to simplify this, I can cancel out common factors. Because I factored it correctly, a minus 2 factors out. Unfortunately, that's the only thing that cancels out. So what I'm left with is a over negative 1 times a plus 2. And that negative can be on the top or the bottom. So if I were going to actually finish this problem, I would probably say it was negative a over a plus 2. All right, here we have another fraction and then another fraction with all in the fraction. So um, again, if there's another way that you want to do these problems, that's fine. But I'm going to do it my same way before. Simplifying the top, simplifying the bottom, and then carrying out the problem. So if I look at the top, I have x plus 2 as my common denominator. So I need to multiply 2 by x plus 2 over x plus 2. The bottom also has that denominator of x, minus, x plus 2. So I'm going to multiply 5 by x plus 2 over x plus 2. So when we carry out this simplification, or this common denominator stuff, we're going to have 2 times x plus 2 minus 4 all over the common denominator of x plus 2, divided by the denominator, which is 5 times x plus 2 minus 10 over x plus 2. So let's simplify this a little bit. It's getting a little messy. On the top, I can distribute the 2. So I'm going to end up with 2x plus 4 minus 4 over x plus 2 all over 5x plus 10 minus 10 over x plus 2. In this next step, I want you to watch me carefully. I'm going to simplify these two things 
and flip my fraction all at the same time. So the top, the numerator, the 4's cancel out, so I'm left with the fraction 2x over x plus 2. Then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. 5x, 10's cancel out, and that becomes the denominator of the new fraction, so I have 5x. Then the numerator of the new fraction is x plus 2. So now we can start simplifying this a little bit. If we look, this is a multiplication problem, so we can cancel out common factors. x plus 2 is a common factor, and x is a common factor. So this actually simplifies to be just 2 over 5. Look at that crazy complex fraction we had. Simplified to be just 2 over 5. For this complex fraction, um, I don't have to do quite as much work. The bottom is already one big fraction for me. I just need to uh, combine the numerator at the top. So it looks like I'm going to need a 2 and I'm going to need a b in my least common denominator. I want my answer to have 2b in the denominator. So the first fraction needs to be multiplied by 2 over 2, and the second fraction needs to be multiplied by b over b. Conveniently enough, the bottom is already a fraction, so that is going to stay 4 over b squared minus 1. And my numerator, I'm going to end up with 2 times 1 plus 1 times b, which is just 2 plus b. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start flipping things. So let's flip our fractions and we're going to end up with b plus 2 over 2b. I hope you're okay with me just flipping those two terms. Addition, uh, we can do that. It's positive b, positive 2. Multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator which is b squared minus 1 over 4. So let's factor a little bit and let's see if we can simplify anything. When we factor these, the first one doesn't factor. I'm still b plus 2 over 2b. The second top does factor. It's b minus 1 times b plus 1, all over 4. So I'm ready to multiply. Idealistically, I would find some common things that cancel out. Unfortunately, nothing cancels out. So I am left with b plus 2 times b minus 1 times b plus 1 over the product of the denominator, which I'm going to simplify to say 8b. Now things are going to cancel, and so that big giant nastiness is our final solution. More and more x's. Don't let them scare you, though. Look, we're doing the same steps over and over and over again. If I look at this numerator alone, let's just focus on the numerator right now. I have x plus 1 and x, which means my least common denominator needs to include an x, and it needs to include an x plus 1. So the first fraction needs to multiply by x over x, and the second fraction needs to multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So we have x times x, which is x squared, minus 1 times x plus 1. I was going to do that work, but I decided not to freak you guys out. I'll add an extra step. Let's look at the numerator, or sorry, the denominator. The denominator also has a common denominator of x and x plus 1. So the first fraction needs to be multiplied by x over x, and the second fraction needs to be multiplied by x plus 1 over x plus 1. Again, I'm going to wait to totally simplify it for one more step. So I end up with x squared plus 1 times x plus 1. All right, let's simplify those. The top is x squared minus x minus 1 over x times x plus 1. The bottom, the denominator, becomes x squared plus x plus 1 over x times x plus 1. So we're ready to flip. I have x squared minus x minus 1 divided by x times x plus 1 times the reciprocal, which is x times x plus 1, over x squared plus x plus 1.
Now, here's where I would look to see if I can factor. Can I factor the x squared minus x minus 1 or the x squared plus x plus 1? Neither of those actually factor, so I can go ahead and multiply. Start by canceling out common factors. x and x cancel, x plus 1 and x plus 1 cancel. So what I have left is x squared minus x minus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. And it's really, really, really tempting, again, to want to cancel from here, but I can't because none of those are factors. They're all terms. So I'm actually done. Since they don't factor any further, I have to leave my problem in standard form. There's no other way to write it. I wanted to do this one because there's a tricky factoring involved in this one. What's nice, though, is that I don't actually have to combine anything in the numerator or in the denominator. They're already single fractions. So I can move straight to my step of multiplying by the reciprocal. I have x over 3x minus 2, then multiply by the reciprocal, which is 9x squared minus 4 over x. Now, let's factor a little bit. I can factor something in the second fraction. I can't factor the first one any further but I can factor that numerator. So since I can't factor the first one, it remains x over 3x minus 2. The second fraction, though, can, is a difference of squares. 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 2 all over x. See, if that was way beyond you, go look at those factoring videos. Okay, one giant fraction. Let's start canceling out common factors x and x cancel, 3x minus 2, and 3x minus 2 cancel. So what I'm left with is 3x plus 2 over nothing, or over 1. So I can actually just write this as 3x plus 2. That nasty old fraction simplified to be something pretty not too bad, just a linear. Okay, I promise, this is the last example, but it's a good one to do. Especially for those of you guys who have figured out another way to do these type of problems, you can do this one pretty fast. I am going to stick with my traditional method since it involves things we already know. Finding a common denominator for the numerator. I know my common denominator needs to have an x plus 1 according to the first fraction and an x minus 1 according to the second fraction. So to simplify my numerator, I'm going to multiply the first one by x minus 1 over x minus 1, and I'm going to simplify or, and I'm going to take the second one, multiply it by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So that means I'm going to have x minus 1 times x minus 1 minus x minus 1 times x plus 1. I'm going to do a similar process for my second fract or my denominator, because again, I need that common denominator of x plus 1 and x minus 1. So again, I'm going to multiply one fraction by x minus 1 over x minus 1, because that's what that's missing. I'm going to multiply the other one by x plus 1 over x plus 1, because that's what that's missing. So I am going to end up with x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus x plus 1 times x plus 1. So before I actually uh, simplify these numerators, I'm going to do my flipping process. We're at that point. I'm going to have x minus 1 times x minus 1 minus x minus 1 times x plus 1 over the common denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 1. I'm going to multiply that by the reciprocal of this one, which is x plus 1 times x minus 1 over x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus x plus 1 times x plus 1. Now, this next step that I'm going to do is going to involve some stuff that uh, is distribution. I'm not going to cancel any common factors yet because I don't want to make any mistakes. I'm going to distribute both of these. So I end up with x squared minus 2x plus 1 subtracting 
x squared minus 1. Then in my second fraction, I'm going to do some more distribution and simplifying. So we're going to end up with x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now we can combine like terms. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to move over to a new slide. So all I did here was I rewrote that last step again at the top so we can see what we're dealing with. Um, I'm going to combine some like terms before I try to cancel anything out. This is a gross, gross mess. I have x squared minus x squared, so I have no x squared. Negative 2x, that's the only thing that's x, so I have minus 2x. And I have 1 minus negative 1, which is 2. In the second fraction, I'm going to keep the top the same. Then I'm going to simplify. I have x squared plus x squared, which is 2x squared. Negative 2x plus 2x cancels out. I have 1 plus 1, which is 2. Let's simplify a little bit to get rid of some of this writing. Those guys cancel, and those guys cancel. So what I have right now is negative 2x plus 2 over 2x squared plus 2, which actually does simplify a little bit further. So I'm going to factor both of these. Out of the top, I can factor a negative 2. So I have x minus 1. Out of the bottom, I can factor out a 2. So I have x squared plus 1. Now I can see that I have a common factor of 2, and they can cancel out. My final answer is negative x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Don't let that last one trick you. It is not a difference of squares, so I can't factor it. So this is it. That's my final answer. That last problem was a doozy. But here's our recap. What did we do in that last problem when well, we did all the steps that we need to do to simplify a complex rational? What's kind of cool is that you're not doing anything new. You're just combining, adding and subtracting, and multiplying and dividing. First step, as always, factor everything. Then you need to simplify the numerator using your addition and subtraction techniques. Then simplify the denominator similarly using addition and subtraction techniques, which means finding a least common denominator. Next, because you have a division problem, you're going to multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator and cancel out any common factors to reduce. Again, I'm going to make a note that there are lots of ways to do these types of problems, and whatever works best is what you want to do. Whatever works best for you, that is. So this technique is sort of doing the same thing every single time, which is why I show it in the video. Um, if you want to use this one, great. If you find another one, as long as it actually works, you're definitely free to use it.